Hey. Hi, you guys. To get get this thing going, can you let me know if you can hear me okay? Any Anybody give me a thumbs up? Sorry to make you get up if you were all snuggled in. Can you hear me now? I am heard, sweet. Okay, cool. All right, welcome to Tuesday night, Nightcap Yoga. I'm Connie Bowman. For those of you who don't know me, if you aren't my family, <laughs> I think I have some family members out there. So welcome, welcome, welcome. This is a gentle yoga practice. This is your nightcap. So um, I usually ask for requests. I didn't see any requests, but I'll double check before we get started. And um, I, uh, yeah, thank you. I'm just saying goodbye to my tech person, AKA Rob, my husband. He's so patient and helps me get set up every Tuesday night. So how are you guys doing? How's everybody doing with this um, potential upsurge yeah, it's a lot, right? I thought tonight we would um, try to stay pretty low to the ground and keep it kind of gentle and work with um, a little theme of surrender. And um, I just want to remind you that this practice is your practice. So if anything that I suggest during this practice just won't work for your body, you know, some people have... Um, sensitive knees and, and coming onto your knees is just not going to work for you. Um, some people have lower back issues and sometimes the for forward folds can be um, a little scary for you. Just don't do anything that could potentially cause any more pain. We want to uh, experience ourselves. We want to go for sensation, but not pain. So, um, I just really encourage you to listen to your body. And that said, if all you did was lay on your mat and breathe, you'd be doing yoga. So yoga means, the word yoga means to yoke or to bind, to bring together all the beautiful elements of ourselves, the body, the mind, and the spirit. And we work with our breath and the movement and magically and beautifully by the end of the practice, usually we feel a little bit better and hopefully tonight we'll have a nice, sweet sleep after this practice. So I encourage you also to have a pillow or two pillows. I have these two bed pillows that I bring down every Tuesday night for this practice. And if you don't have them, that's okay. But if you do have them, um, just keep them handy. And a blanket or a towel is also handy. If you happen to have blocks, and straps and all the accoutrement, great. You can use them. You probably know how to use them, so you can do that. But I'd like to start in child's pose because child's pose for me um, symbolizes surrender. And um, it's just a really nice place to start the practice. And it's a great stretch for the lower back and the shoulders. So um, as you're ready, just spread your blanket on the floor to protect your knees. You can even put a pillow down. And another thing you can do with these pillows if your hips just won't reach back towards your heels is tuck a pillow or as many pillows as you need between your legs and your hips to give you that extra support. Um, I'm not gonna use it, but another suggestion is to lay a pillow down in front of you and then just snuggle in. So what we're gonna do, I'll, I'll put those aside so you can see is just come forward as you're ready and just let your forehead come to the floor. If it won't reach the floor, you can put your pillow down. You can even use a block or a book and just settle in. And then once you get there, just extend your arms forward as far as feels good so that you're feeling this great stretch in your back and your neck. And then breathe here and just notice sensation immediately and decide if this is a place where you can um, consciously stay and breathe for a couple of minutes because we will be here for a while and if you'd like to um, come onto your back that is perfectly perfect so your practice so once you get here in your child's pose 
Close your eyes. And before we can even begin to think about surrendering in this pose, let's accept what we are here working with. So beginning to notice the body, what we brought to our mat this evening. Notice the places that are making connection to the mat, the forehead, the knees, the elbows, and notice what's not making connection, the chest, belly maybe. Begin to appreciate your external surroundings, just accepting what's here. So I'm hearing doors slamming in the distance as people leave the house. Notice maybe birds chirping in the background if your windows are open. Notice the temperature of the air. Begin to notice your natural breath. As you inhale, the lungs expand, the rib cage expands, the belly expands. And as you exhale, you just release the air slowly. The belly comes back to spine. And maybe on that exhalation, you release a little bit more, softening, settling in. Take another round of breath, inhaling into that lower back and the belly, the middle back and the chest, bringing the air all the way up to the lungs. And maybe when you get up to that tippy top space in the lungs, take another sip of air, more than you thought you could take. And then just slowly release, letting it go. Beautiful, let's take one more, filling up slowly. And exhaling slowly. Good. And on your next breath in, just lift your forehead up off the mat and slowly walk your hands over to the right. Maybe your hands come off the mat, your forehead can reset down on the mat as you get that stretch in the left side body. Take a full breath in here and a deep exhalation, long and full. And when you're ready, inhale as you walk your way through center and then take yourself over to the left side of your mat and lower down again. Get that stretch on the right side body, feeling that right shoulder filling up. And then softening on the exhale. Oh, beautiful. Now, as you're ready, come back to center. You can just pause here, letting yourself melt a little bit more. Maybe you've sunk in, maybe you've Opt it out wherever you are. That's perfect for the, your practice tonight. Surrendering to your inner voice. Surrendering to what works for you. So when you're ready, we'll slowly make our way up to a comfortable seat and take one of those pillows if you have or your blanket or a block and tuck it underneath you and then reach back and remove some hip flesh. And then come to a comfortable seat, Sukhasana, easy pose. It's supposed to be easy, but it's not easy for everyone. So if this doesn't work for you, you can always extend your legs long. It's all good. It's all good. And when you're ready, sit up nice and tall. Notice how your shoulders are feeling after today after so many days. And when you're ready, lift your shoulders up to your ears. Get really long in the side body and then roll those shoulders back and down. 
Take another breath in and lift them up and then exhale, rotate them back, squeezing those shoulder blades together. Third time's a charm. Inhale and exhale. Good. Oh, I heard a big crack there. Just take the right shoulder and take your gaze over to the right, just circling them out, turning your head, just checking in with that neck as you rotate those shoulders one at a time. Good job. We'll take one more to the right, one more to the left, and then come back to center. Good job. Sit up nice and tall again. Think lifting from the base to the crown. The more we lift, the more space we create for the breath and the body. And take that big inhalation from bottom to top, belly to ribs to lungs. And as you exhale, just take your chin down to your chest. Let the chin come all the way down. And then take your hands behind your head. Just make a little basket for the back of your head. Just Clasp your hands and just put a little bit, just ever so slightly, tiny little bit of weight on the back of the head and just rest it there. Take a round or two of breath here, just letting that neck relax, stretch. You got a little bonus stretch in the top, the upper back. Good. And on your next inhale, we're going to lift the nose up to the ceiling, release the fingertips to the floor. Take a big breath in, stretch the throat chakra, that center of communication. Maybe make a little face, stretch your mouth as you're doing this. Yeah. See what happens. Open your mouth nice and wide. Ooh. Got some cracks there too. And then slowly bring your chin back to center. Rub your palms together. We're gonna to do a little experiment that I like to do in some of my classes, um, just to appreciate the fascia in the body, how interconnected it is. So we're gonna take those charged hands, just take one hand, your right hand to your right ear, and just give that earlobe a nice massage. And you're, you're really gonna work through that earlobe like up and down and inside, and just, just give it a good massage with your two fingers. And just really work that um, fascia. There's even fascia in that, in that earlobe. It's a little bit harder, so see if you can work it out. And the fascia over time without use gets kind of, um, like taffy, it gets kind of hard to move. So that's why we wanna keep our bodies moving. Just like we were pulling taffy, stretching it out. Okay, so let's take the left ear as well. We'll take that left hand to the left ear and give that ear lobe a nice good, give those ear lobes a little tug. Good. Beautiful. And then let it go, shake it out, inhale. And then as you exhale, take your chin to your chest. Notice, just see if you notice you have a little more mobility. Maybe you'll notice it, maybe you won't. I'm gonna take my word for it, we are going to. As you inhale, take that chin up toward the ceiling, stretch the throat, open up the mouth and the jaw. See if you've got some more room. See if you can stretch a little bit of the face, facial, facial muscles since we can't get facials in a lot of places. Come back to center and just take one more, chin to chest, and then lift the nose to the ceiling on your inhale. Good. Come back to center, take your chin over to one side, see if you can keep your torso facing forward and just stretch the neck, taking your gaze maybe over that shoulder and then come back to center and take it to the left. So sometimes what we do in classes will um, play with these neck stretches, keep moving, 
side to side, stretching gently on that neck. We'll, we, will, um, we will move our necks in one direction or the other, and then we'll um, rub our earlobes and see if that helps. And usually we notice a little bit of a, um, a little bit more give because we are interconnected beings. Our fascia is amazing, amazing material in our body. So that said, let's move a little bit more. Let's change the cross of our legs or just let them go if you're here. And we're gonna take some hip circles. We're gonna move into our hips. So just go whatever direction feels right for you. We could all be going different directions and it wouldn't even throw us off. Isn't that a beautiful thing? Good. We'll wake up those hips a little bit. Keeping the breath smooth and keeping those relaxed earlobes. <laughs> relaxed neck. Keeping everything soft. And then take a switch of the direction before we get dizzy here. Round and round she goes, and then come to center and sit up nice and tall. Beautiful. When you're ready, arms come out to the side. Let's be a bird. Inhale, reach up, look up. Let your palms touch and draw your hands down to heart center. Let your chin come to your chest. Let's take it again. Inhale, reach and look. And exhale, hands to heart center, chin to chest. And this time I want you to imagine you're reaching up for all the goodness as you inhale and draw it right down into your chest because that's what you're doing as you practice. Just draw it right into your heart center and just pause to notice how that feels. Good. On this next time, we're going to take a twist. So inhale, reach up, look up, send those fingers. And then... Take your twist to one side. So we're gonna sweep one arm back and the other one across the body to land somewhere behind the knee. You can keep a nice wide um, open stance. Spread your fingers, nice wide hand on that hand. And then you can support yourself with this back hand. And move with the breath to take this twist. So inhale, lift your heart, lift your gaze, lift your crown. And exhale, take your gaze over that shoulder. Good. Keeping your hips facing forward as much as you can. Inhale again. Lift and lengthen. And exhale to twist. One more. Inhale. And exhale. This will help with digestion. I usually get a little belch out of it when I do it, so it must help. So when you're ready, totally release that, reach your arms up, and exhale as you switch sides, whichever side. Just take a look over that shoulder and use your breath to lift you, lengthen you, make space, and then use your exhalation to take your gaze over that shoulder. We'll take two more breaths here, working with your own breath. Moving that spine into a twist, rinsing you out, detoxifying all the things. And as you're ready on your exhale, just slowly release, unwind, shake that out. And then we'll take the right fingertips. I'm going to really try to mirror you here. We're going to take the right fingertips over to the right. Lift that left arm overhead and take a deep side stretch and look the opposite direction. Breathing in and exhaling to let it out. One more breath in. And then slowly release, coming back to center. Take those left fingertips over to the left. Take that right arm up and overhead. And lean 
maybe looking in the opposite direction, making space in that side body, gentle side stretches. Nice job. As you're ready, slowly release. And we'll take those legs and release them from their bondage and just point and flex your toes. A couple of times, just let the ankles release and then circle them out. And we'll thank our toes and then go the other direction. Good. Good. All right. Are you ready to bring your feet together? Before we do, we're gonna work with a little bit of the fascia in the feet. So take your feet and spread them wide apart. Maybe your um, outsides of your feet will touch. And then let your fingers just massage your feet, the bottoms of the feet. Come on, they love it, don't they? Unless you're really ticklish. Just get into the, that fascia there and kind of dig in with your thumbs and just release tension in your feet. So nice. My husband and I went to the pool today and he actually rubbed my feet in the pool. I was like, whoa, where did that come from? Thank you. That was amazing. And then when you're ready, just bring your knees up and just give your feet a little tap. See if you can pink them up a little bit. You can take your fingers and um, this is really fun and challenging. Um, place your fingers in between your toes. See if you can get them in between. So that's kind of hard if your toes are really close together. And then you can just kind of work, work them in, massaging your toes. Breathe through that. Good. And then release that. Let that go. And we'll just play with the uh, afterglow of that fun work. So sit up nice and tall with your feet in Baddha Konasana. So feet are touching. And your hands can rest where they're comfortable, maybe just right on top. And close your eyes and just bring your awareness to your feet. If you're... Um, legs are feeling like they're suspended in air, you can tuck something underneath. Your pillows can go there or a block. I'll be consistent. Let me put both my pillows there. There, there we go. And then we're gonna sit up nice and tall, draw your heart forward and see if you can allow your legs to just relax toward the floor. Hi, Sarah, I'm thinking of you if you're there. She said, no, don't be too hard on me. I'm not being too hard. So we're just letting those thighs, those outer hips, the inner thighs, just kind of relax to the floor, working with our breath, inhaling deeply and exhaling slowly. And then on the next inhale, lift even more. Lift your heart forward, crown of the head reaching toward the heavens. Keep pressing down into the earth. The um, tailbone is fully grounded on the earth. And on your exhale, just come forward until you feel that stretch in the lower back. And take another breath in and maybe let yourself surrender here. It might take a few of those breaths to lift and lengthen on the inhale and letting the exhalation Bring you forward, allowing your legs to just open out. We're opening the hips now, starting to get into some deeper tissue. But we've released some of the fascia in the earlobes and the feet. So I'm telling you, it's going to be easy when you're ready. See if you can take it through another couple of rounds of breath. And just relax. Once you find that edge, relax there. Closing the eyes, softening the face, just letting the legs release toward the floor. Nice deep breath in. Nice long, slow exhalation.
beautiful. We'll take one more breath in. And use your exhalation to slowly sit up. And then we're going to rock the baby because this is a nice one too. So I'm going to take the, um, your left arm and wrap it around this left leg. And maybe your uh, foot can go in somewhere in around your elbow and you can just rock the baby. You can just wrap this arm around you, around your leg somewhere and just look down at your leg and say, I love you, you're so cute. And just rock your baby, rock your leg. So you'll get a little bit of a hip sensation. Now, if you have any hip surgeries, any um, hip replacements, you might want to skip this. But just um, see what you can do here. Just rock your baby a couple more times. Just gently opening those hips, finding a little mobility. And using your breath to stay in this present moment. Good. And as you're ready, we'll just let that, let that be. We could rest it down where we had it or extend it long. Let's take the other side so we can see what we can do with this side. Just kind of rock your baby on this side. Some of you have done this before. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Admire your baby. Can you imagine if anybody has twins? I can't imagine rocking two babies at once, but people do it. Twins, triplets. Quadruplets. It's amazing. Couple more. We got this. And when you're ready, slowly release that. We'll get a little more deeply into the hips, but I just wanted to uh, get started on that fun note. So when you're ready, just move your props away from you and bring yourself into tabletop. We love tabletop. We can get some really good stretching of the spine here in tabletop. So when you're ready, have your knees under your hips, spread your fingers nice and wide and take your um, hands under your shoulders and let the tops of your feet just rest on the floor for now. And as you're ready, drop your belly, lift your head and your tailbone and come into that cow pose. Inhale here. And then exhale round, coming into that Halloween cat pose, pushing the mat away with your hands, really exaggerating as much as you can the stretch of the back. And we'll move through a few more, just moving with your breath, inhaling and exhaling. Good job. Inhaling again. And exhaling to round. Good. Inhale into that cow. We love the cows. Exhale to round. We love the cats. Inhale. And exhale. You might want to stay in one of these one of these shapes a little bit longer if it feels really good. And whenever you're ready, we'll meet back in table pose. And then we're going to play a little bit with our balance. So extend your right arm forward when you're ready. And then take your left leg back. And just play with this balance. Yeah, start to wobble a little bit. It's okay. We got this. Take another breath in. And on your exhale, take that left foot across the right and sweep that right arm back and take a look at that foot. Hello, opening up that shoulder. Good, inhale and exhale, send it back, extend, get long, and then slowly lower down. We got that, we got that down, so reach. Let's reach the other sides, opposing sides, good can flex that right foot or point it, totally yogi's choice. Inhale. And then exhale as you sweep your arm back, looking back, taking that foot across the body. Breathe in. Embrace the wobble. Breathe out. And come back to center. Good job. Nice. 
Take some shakes of the booty. I call it the Sophie shake. Sophie misses you, Jeanette, if you're there. And come back to center, get still. And then just take some head circles here. We're just gonna start with the head and circle it in whatever direction. So we've got a little more freedom here to move the head. And then go in the opposite direction. Only if your neck permits. And then as you're ready, take some shoulder circles here. So get the shoulders moving. Just right and left. And then immediately you notice that your hips want to start moving. So make this a full body movement. Just kind of move as your body feels ready. So you can get that cat cow back involved. You can take your hips all the way back. You can go in a figure eight, moving the head, the shoulders. Just letting your body move intuitively. Good. Making that movement as smooth and as you can. And take a couple more of these, maybe move the head back around and then come back to stillness. Just take a moment to close your eyes. Take a big breath in. Notice your heartbeat. And then tuck those toes. And then we're going to lift the hips slowly coming into downward facing dog because we love the dogs too. And then once you get there, first remove your blanket and then take a walk of your dog. Let your dog walk. And bending one knee and then the other, stretching out those feet, finding that length in the back. And then find stillness here. Press the heels back toward the floor and lift your hips a little bit higher. The shoulders are working. The fingertips are pressing into the floor as much as the wrist. Don't try not to dump all of the weight into the wrist. Take another breath in and then look forward and make your way to the front of the mat. We'll come into a forward fold here. So a block is nice here or two. Or just let yourself hang, bending your knees as much as you need to, reaching for your elbows, letting your head rest in that little nest that you make with your arms, ragdoll. And breathing slowly. Nice deep breath. Rocking side to side, maybe that gives you a little more of a release, a little more opportunity to surrender in that lower back area. And then eventually find some stillness here. Shake your head yes. And shake your head no. Good. Take a nice big breath in and come up about halfway, bringing your hands to your shins. Make that Ardha Uttanasana shape, that half table shape. And draw your shoulders away from your ears. Get used to that. And then exhale, surrender again, release again. Maybe your legs are ready to come a little more straight. Maybe not. And then when you're ready, press into your feet, press into your toes and root to rise, reaching all the way up, sending those fingertips up to the sky, getting super long, reaching up and looking up. And then bring your palms to touch and draw them right down into your beautiful heart and close your eyes. Notice how it feels to be standing. We made a whole transition here. Found our way to our feet and our mountain pose. So when you're ready, release your hands. Excuse me. Down to your sides. And draw your shoulders back and toward one another in the back body, spreading your fingers nice and wide. Coming into mountain pose. See how it feels here in mountain. Nice and solid and grounded. 
So take your weight over to your right foot. Just don't even lift the left foot up, but just feel like it could be suspended. Just a gentle, um, so that you can kind of move it from side to side, but not really taking it off the floor, still making connection with the floor, but most of your weight is in your right foot. Just notice that transition there. And then bring yourself over to the left side. Let your weight come into your left foot. And just barely lifting that right foot off the floor. Good job, you're balancing already. Nice, excellent. Okay, so come back to center, shake out your knees. Let's move a little bit more. So we'll be going up and down. So if your back has any um, injuries or particular um, parts that just really cannot touch the floor. Just go as far as you can and not farther than you should. So it's my little disclaimer. So look down at your toes and lift and spread them and then press your toes into the floor. So your toes are supporting your feet and your ankles, knees under hips, hips under shoulders, crown of the head, just resting majestically on the top of your body and inhale, reach up and look up, let your palms touch and then reverse that, those hands and swan dive forward, coming into your forward fold, letting your head hang forward. Inhale, come into that Ardha Uttanasana halfway lift and then exhale, hands come to the mat. We're gonna inhale, reach up and look up, let the palms touch again and exhale, swan dive forward. Inhale, come to your halfway lift and you'll start to see a pattern. Exhale, fold. Bend your knees as much as you need to, to, to inhale, reach up and look up. Exhale, swan dive. Inhale, halfway lift. It's kind of like a, a toe touch. And exhale, fold. Remember when we used to do that in PE? Touch your toes. Shake out your neck. Shake out your head, yes and no. Good. You're doing great. Bend your knees, roll up one vertebra at a time. And when you get up there, make a little teepee with your hands. Let your, um, let your hands clasp and make that little um, Charlie's Angels teepee, right? And then lean to the left. Take that side bend to the left, pressing feet, all four corners of both feet into the floor, really committing to being here, standing in your presence. Inhale and exhale. Take it a little bit more. Maybe make that kind of crescent moon shape with your body. Press that right foot into the floor. And then inhale back up and we'll exhale to the other side. Good. I forgot about Charlie's Angels. Yeah, Charlie's Angels. They were, um, they were pretty bad. You know. I didn't say the other word. Inhale, reach up and look up. Frame your ears. Press into your feet again. Feet, press into your toes again and your feet. And then lean back. Maybe look up. See if you can see your fingers. See your pointer fingers, your TP fingers. Maybe lean back a little bit more. Only if your back uh, allows. You can press your hip points forward. And then exhale, slowly release. Just shake that out. You're doing so great. You really are, I can tell. When you're ready, lift and spread your toes, reconnect, come into mountain pose. We'll inhale, move a little bit more. And exhale, swan dive. Inhale, come to that halfway lift. You've been here before, exhale. This time we're gonna bring our fingers to the floor or the mat and go ahead and step back, way back, so far back all the way back. And then we make this long line with that leg and then just lower that knee to the floor. Lower the top of that right foot to the floor and come on up. We'll take our hands to our knee and just lean slightly forward until you get this nice stretch on the hip flexor. Anjani Asana, you know this. Again, we're gonna lift our heart and reach our arms up if you like. You can stay where you are, of course, and make that teepee again and lean back ever so slightly. And so as things get a little challenging, we still have our breath. So make sure the breath keeps moving smoothly as we 
begin a little bit deeper stretch, a lot deeper. Let's face it. It's a lot deeper, but it feels so good. One more breath in and exhale it out. Release your hands to the floor. Fingertips come to the floor. And then just straighten out that front leg, that left leg. Bring the foot to the, the heel to the floor and lift those toes. And lift your heart again. So um, again, if this knee bothers you, it, you can always tuck something under it. I should have said that before. If your knees ever bother you during this practice, blankets and pillows are really nice. As you're ready, coming forward with a nice long spine, letting your exhale take you towards your knee. Inhale again, lift and lengthen, and exhale, re, re, re knee. <laughs> when you're ready, one more breath in, coming to the fingertips, lifting your heart, lifting your gaze, and then exhale. Come into that runner's lunge, letting yourself get that hamstring nice and stretched out. Keeping that flex of that foot, engaging the front of the the leg, the quadriceps, you get that reciprocal action there. And we'll take one more breath in. And get a little deeper if you like. And then play with me here, only if you're game, only if you're excited about this. Take your pillows and then tuck them underneath this leg. And we'll come into um, a bit of a... Uh, Hanumanasana, the uh, split, just a little bit. Just come as far as you are able, as, as far as you feel you are able to go. If you tuck these pillows under you, they um, will support you a little bit more. And if you have your blocks, which I do, I just can't reach it, you can always set yourself up with a block to hold you up or just come to your fingertips. And this is a deep stretch for your, if you haven't already noticed, for your hamstrings. And so, what must we do? What, what must we do? Breathe. So if this is not deep enough and you want to fold forward in this little modified split, go for it. I'm going to stay here and I'm going to take, commit to three more breaths. So you can even close your eyes. Nice, deep inhalations, long, slow exhalations. So even when we're in these challenging poses, the breath still sends that message to the nervous system. It's safe. It's okay. This is good. Maybe you can let go. Maybe you can surrender a little bit. Maybe you even come down onto one hip. Do what you feel you want to do for the stretch. You know your body better than anybody. And on the next breath in, we're going to slowly bring that leg back. Now your mat's going to want to come with it. It's okay. It's okay. Take your pillows off to the side. Keep them close. If you have blocks and you want to put them a little um, more convenient than I did, just go ahead. And we'll come back up to that um, Anjani Asana. And then take your hands to the mat. Lift that right knee and step gracefully back to your downward facing dog. And once you get there, just walk that dog right and left. And then find stillness and see if you can notice a difference between the left side and the right side. Take a big breath in. And a nice, long, slow exhalation. And then take your weight, uh, take your right hand and reach it to the outside of this left foot. And we're going to take a look under that left arm, getting that stretch. Little twist. And as you're ready, release that. Take it to the other side, reaching the left hand to the outside of that right leg. Keep pressing those heels down. And gaze at your camera upside down. 
head under heart. When you're ready, release that. Come back into your downward facing dog. You can bend your knees and hop forward, or you can just take a nice little walk forward, and we'll meet in forward fold. Good. Beautiful. When you get there, you can take your peace fingers and wrap them around your big toes and draw your elbows out for a deeper forward fold, or you can take your hands and tuck them right under your feet and let your toes just massage out your wrist. Bending your knees as much as you need to. Just allow yourself to surrender here. Nice big breath in. Nice big breath out. One more. And then let it go. Release the hands and bend your knees. Root to rise. Inhale. Reach up. Make that teepee with your hands and lean to the left. Look to the right. Feet firmly planted. Firm foundation, as my daddy would say. Inhale back up. And exhale to the side, opposite side, looking in the opposite direction. Big breaths in. Nice, long, slow exhalations as you rise back up, reaching up, maybe leaning back to take your hands back. Let's clasp them here and lean back as we look up, drawing those shoulders away, pressing the hips forward, opening up that throat chakra. And then as you exhale, come back to center Reach up, look up, let's do it again. Exhale, swan dive forward, bending your knees as much as you need to, protect that lower back. Inhale, come to your halfway lift. And exhale, let's take that left foot back, all the way back, way back. Sounds like a high school cheer. Way back. And then lower that knee to the floor, propping yourself as, as needed, and the top of the foot to the floor as well coming into Anjani Asana. And let's take the hands to the knee and enjoy the stretch. You can come forward slightly. This is one of the um, poses where your knee can come slightly over the ankle. So leaning forward, you get that nice hip, hip flexor stretch in the other leg. So enjoy, breathe, you got it. We'll take one more breath here, and then we'll reach our arms up. Find that teepee. Maybe lean back a little bit. Maybe you're noticing a little bit of a wobble. It's okay. It's okay. We're doing hard, good work here, stretching out. You're going to feel so stretched out. Thanks to our earlobes. All thanks to our earlobes. Good job. All right. When you're ready, slowly release that. Take an inhale. And then on your exhale, slide your hips back. Lift that right toe. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Shine that heart forward. Make a, make a happy face. And then exhale, take your nose towards your knee. All this can be done in a high lunge as well if you want a little bit more of a challenge. Inhale, lift and lengthen. We'll take two more. Exhale, fold in. Good job. Inhale, lift and lengthen again. And then exhale, refold. And just we'll commit to staying here for another couple of breaths. Enjoying this stretch. Keeping that Right hip kind of pulled back a little bit. Good. Just noticing your body, noticing your breath. And if any thoughts come in that threaten to disturb your peace, just notice them and let them float by. And take one more breath in. And as you're ready, take that foot back to the floor and decide if you want to 
tra travel with us on this fun journey of splits. And if you do, tuck your pillows under there and then send that right leg forward and the left leg back and set yourself up. Now this side might be more cooperative than the other side or less. Just go with it. It's all good. Breathe in and breathe out as you bow forward if you're ready. Just enjoy. We'll take two more breaths here. And then we'll slowly peel our way back up. It's all good. We got this. Take your mat with you sometimes. And then this time, let's bring our pillows right in front of us and take our left hip to the floor. This will be a nice counter stretch. And then we're just gonna sink down on top of our pillows. So our left hip is to the floor. Our knees will be um, facing to the right. And then our hands will come to frame the pillows and we'll just melt down and find a comfortable twist, possibly turning your head in the opposite direction. Now that might not work for your neck, so you can just turn it in the same direction as your legs. And we will breathe here, finding some deeper breaths, allowing ourselves to reconnect with that deep, long, slow rhythm of our breaths, allowing yourself to surrender here, finding some peace and some surrender. Let your eyes close, let your face soften and just breathe. So I was walking today and not far into my walk, I think it was before the first mile, I came upon a family that was getting ready to go out on a bike ride. And um, it was a mom and a dad. And a, it must have been about a 10 or 11-year-old daughter. And the daughter was clearly blind. She had her bike helmet on. And the father was helping her get up on the back seat of a tandem bicycle. So she was riding behind her dad. And the mom was going to ride her own bicycle. And I just thought, wow, what trust does it take for that little girl to ride behind her daddy on that bicycle? But what a gift he gave her that she could trust him enough so that she could experience the freedom and the joy of riding behind him on that bike. It was such a moment for me. I just thought, what beauty. And as they rode by me, I was, um, I was walking and um, I heard the dad say, to your right, to your right. I, could, I was wearing earphones, so I was a little, it was a little quiet, but I heard it. And then as he passed by, right behind him was his daughter. And she said, hey, how you doing? She was having such a good time. <sighs> So if we could only trust, trust our bodies, trust our breath, we can start there, then we can build upon that and find trust for this life that seems somewhat unstable right now for a lot of us. When you're ready, slowly bring yourself up and we'll switch sides, taking our knees over to the right, our hips, um, our torso will face the pillows and then we will just melt down onto the pillows. And if you want this extra stretch for your neck, just turn your head. Let me keep my head up so you can hear me. Um, turn your head to the opposite side. So just snuggling in, finding a place where you can surrender here. Just allowing yourself this time to fully surrender. Breathing in 
and breathing out. Another couple of breaths. Fully surrender. All right, so we're down. Now we're going to slowly peel ourselves up. Good. And bring your legs alongside your pillows or right underneath your pillows. We're going to take one more uh, forward fold, this time with the legs extended. I'm at the beach. Everything has sand on it. So tuck your pillows where they're going to be comfortable. And then we're just going to surrender forward here. And you might want to grab a hold of your feet or your toes. And just allow your head to come forward. And just relax. So this might be where you're comfortable. Or you might want to remove one pillow. Or you can even let your pillow kind of scrunch it up and let your forehead rest on your pillow. Wherever you are, just surrender into this forward fold. Just let your lower back release and your face soften. Backs of the legs softening. Even the upper back, just rounding forward, giving yourself the opportunity to slowly just little little fascia by fascia, relaxing toward those legs. Keeping the breath slow and smooth. Good. Let's take two more breaths here and just see if you can soften anywhere else. Shoulders, neck, jaw. Just remembering it sends that good signal to the rest of the body that it's safe, it's okay, it's good. As you're ready, slowly release. We're going to take our pillows or our blocks, depending on what you have available, and just tuck one or two pillows underneath your sacrum, just right under your lower back. And then extend one leg. I'm going to extend my right. And just hug your left knee into your chest. This is called wind releasing pose. Good one to know. And just let your eyes close here as you hug that knee in toward your chest here. And just let the front of the foot relax. Let the shoulders melt toward the floor. And let that extended leg relax. Good. Take one more breath in. And as you exhale, switch legs. Hug that other leg in. Mine is the right. Extend that left leg. Hug it in so you really feel it pressing against your lower belly. And then soften your shoulders. Close your eyes. Soften your face. Breathe. Good, big breath in, deep exhalation, and then slowly release that leg. Take a full body stretch here, sort of rounding uh, forward up toward the ceiling, rounding your spine so you're getting that stretch in that lower lumbar spine. 
Take a big breath in, fill up, and then bend your knees and slide that pillow up just ever so slightly. It's not gonna work if your pillow's too big, but take your, your um, butt to the other side of the pillow so it's on the mat. And then you have this just a little bit of a, a back bend here. So you can nestle into your pillow and take your arms either above your head, out to the side, or maybe in um, cactus pose. And we'll breathe here. And notice. So it might take you a couple of breaths to just settle into this pose. It's a back bend. So see if you can settle in. Close your eyes. Remember your earlobes. Smile and breathe. Deep, full breaths in, nice, long, slow breaths out. Good. Swallow in your throat to relax that throat. Take two more breaths. See if you can keep the exhalation longer than the inhalation. Don't rush it. Deep breath in. Long, slow exhalation. Last one. You got it. And then as you're ready, bend your knees, bring your feet to the floor, lift your hips enough to slide that pillow out of the way, and then come down to your back. And now keep your knees bent as you, as you like it. And then notice how your back is feeling. So you might feel that little lumbar curve a little more fully accentuated. Feels good. And then bring your heels to the back, your feet to the outside edge of your mat and bring your knee, knees in to touch. Good. Bring a breath in here and exhale it out. And then take that right knee over to the left. Take this left leg and we're not gonna quite wrap it around. We're just gonna take the ankle to the outside of this right leg and just give it that extra little um, weight to encourage it toward the floor. And then take your arms out to a T and turn your face toward your camera and smile. Now turn your head to the right and breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in and breathe out. Smiling is always a good idea. And take one more breath and let it go. Slowly release those legs, bring your head back to center. You can leave your arms where they are and just let your knees come in to center. Let your feet relax on the outsides of the mat. Full breath in and a full breath out. And then we're gonna take that left knee over toward the right and take that right ankle, bending that knee and just set it gently on top of that left leg and turn your gaze toward the left. Breathe in and breathe out. Nice stretch for those outer hips. Take one more breath in. And then slowly exhale as you release your feet to the floor. And then bring your knees in, hug them in. Give yourself a nice big squeeze. Maybe rock from side to side. Decide what feels good for you. <clears throat> 
And then if you like, you can tuck your pillow under your glutes. I will demonstrate. And then lift your legs up to the sky. Let's find that supported shoulder stand here. And just admire your feet. Relax your head, neck, and shoulders. And just get those ankles up over the heart, reversing that circulation. So good. So good. Breathing in. Breathing out. Breathing in. And letting it go. few more breaths here. So good. If you want to take this time to point and flex or rotate those ankles in both directions, we can do that for sure. And when you're ready, bend your knees, take your feet back to the floor, and then just slide that pillow down a little ways and tuck the other pillow under, on top of it. Make yourself a little, a little tower of pillows. The more, the better. You can even pile it higher than I have it. And then let your legs just rest over those pillows. And then snuggle your shoulders underneath you. Take one shoulder under one side and the other shoulder under the other. And then take one hand to the heart, one hand to the belly. And breathe into your heart space and your belly. And find that rhythm that we established earlier, slow and deep. One hand on heart, one hand on belly. Allowing yourself to soothe yourself. Surrender to your own self-care. Good. And take a couple more breaths here. And then as you're ready, release your arms out to the side, palms facing up. And just let your feet fall out and let your eyes close. And we'll take a body scan here. One of the best ways to progressively relax. So as you're ready, soften that space between your eyes. Just let go of any tension in the forehead, the brow. And release that space behind the eyes, softening. And then the cheeks relax. The jaw relaxes. And the tongue can come down from the roof of the mouth. Allow the shoulders to snuggle in. The chest melting toward the floor. Releasing that solar plexus, just softening the whole space from belly down to pelvis, hips relaxing. The legs melt toward the floor. Knees soften. Calves and shins and ankles relax. And the tops and the bottoms of the feet, the arms, the hands, the entire body melting toward the floor. Releasing, relaxing and surrendering into your Shavasana. Nothing left to do after this practice. 
Just let go. Perhaps you have traveled too fast over false ground. Now your soul has come to take you back. Take refuge in your senses. Open up to all the small miracles you rushed through. Become inclined to watch the way of rain when it falls slow and free. Imitate the habit of twilight taking time to open to the well of color that fostered the brightness of day. Draw alongside the silence of stone until its calmness can claim you. Be excessively gentle with yourself. Stay clear of those vexed in spirit. Learn to linger around someone of ease who feels they have all the time in the world. Gradually, you will return to yourself, having learned a new respect for your heart and the joy that dwells far within slow time. Begin to deepen the breath. And bring small movements into your extremities, your fingers and your toes, maybe turning the head from side to side. And then take your time or stay right where you are. Take your time to come up to a seat if that's your greatest desire. Perhaps you'd rather stay and rest or just roll into bed. I'm not offended. In fact, I'm with you. But if you're ready to join me in a comfortable seat, just come on up and let your eyes close and just notice how you feel. When you're ready, release your arms out and reach up again for all the goodness. Reach up, grab a hold of it, and then draw it down into your own heart. Let your chin come down to your chest and bow to your own beauty, your light, your capacity for surrender, and your courage to change. Breathe into that heart space. And exhale out anything that gets in the way of all that. (sighs) Thank you so much for practicing on this Tuesday, this special Tuesday, every day special. And it's especially special when you're with me. Namaste, my friends. I hope you have a really sweet sleep. Good night. Thanks for practicing. I'll see you next Tuesday. Sweet. See you guys.